Another day, another alarming report of sole source government contracts being steered to a well-connected firm by the Trudeau Liberals. Canada's procurement watchdog has turned up troubling findings about how one major consulting company secured lucrative federal deals worth $117 million, mostly without competition. The report raises familiar questions about backroom favoritism and cronyism within liberal circles, this time involving a firm entangled in past international scandals. Though light on specifics for now, the Watchers review seems poised to spur fresh scrutiny of the government's cozy ties and flawed oversight enabling corporate windfalls at taxpayer expense. For critics, it underscores the need for greater transparency and accountability in government contracting. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we jump into today's video, take a second to sign up for our exclusive uncensored newsletter. The mainstream media won't report Trudeau's scandals and corruption, but our newsletter delivers the raw truth to your inbox daily. We'll leave you the link in the description box. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. On a new corruptive day for Justin Trudeau and his government, a report by Canada's procurement ombudsman, Alexander Jeglik, provided insights into the concerning rise in sole source government contracts awarded to consulting firm McKinsey between 2011 to 2022. The report reveals McKinsey was awarded $117 million in federal contracts, with most being sole source without proper justification. This sets a troubling precedent of favoritism in the procurement process. As the report indicates, the number of lucrative contracts awarded to McKinsey began increasing significantly in 2018 under the Liberal government, rising dramatically in 2019 through 2022. This growth in uncompleted contracts to one firm this suggests the cozy Liberal McKinsey relationship is driving procurement, not fair process. The primary conduit for McKinsey's government cash grab is a Liberal approved national standing offer that allowed McKinsey to be handed contracts without bidding against competitors. However, as Jeglik discovered, even this standing offer failed to follow proper sole source justification requirements, sole sourcing at its worst. Furthermore, the report notes that most call-up contracts under the standing offer lack details on McKinsey's specific work, hampering oversight, the combination of a potentially improper non-competitive standing offer, allowing McKinsey to take taxpayer money with minimal accountability. This is the epitome of government waste and mismanagement under Trudeau's watch, but it gets worse. Jeglik also identified competitively bid contracts potentially rigged to benefit McKinsey. In some cases, bidding terms were suspiciously altered so McKinsey qualified. In another case, McKinsey was awarded the contract after the original winner was ousted under odd circumstances. Taken together, these findings create an undeniable perception that the Trudeau liberals steer contracts to their well-connected friends at McKinsey through a variety of shady means. So much for Trudeau's promised sunny ways and ethical government cloth. This comes as no surprise given the litany of contracting scandals under Trudeau's government. The Auditor General's scorching report on the over-budget, privatized arrive can app is one of many examples of liberal mismanagement. Yet Trudeau remains unrepentant. Collectively, these observations create a strong perception of favoritism towards McKinsey, Jeglik wrote of some of the competitive contracting processes. The McKinsey report confirms alarming problems in liberal oversight of procurement and contracting. They claim to support transparency, but their actions enable opaque and unethical practices that serve corporate cronies over the taxpayer. As reported last year with valid concerns around McKinsey and company, Public Services and Procurement Canada have raised a flag around Liberals awarding 23 contracts worth $100 million since 2015, including three competitive processes and 20 single-sourced. Moreover, it was reported that the company has been in scandals in South Africa, China, and the U.S., Justin Trudeau and his government clearly turned a blind eye on such an alarming reputation, defending the use of consultants claiming they do things the best way to serve the Canadians in the best way. Clearly not if you're using taxpayers' money with no outcome. The Trudeau government is facing mounting questions about whether it's too cozy with the world's oldest consulting firm, McKinsey. So why did they spend so much? Whose idea was this? And who's pulling the strings? Public Services and Procurement Canada revealed the Liberals have awarded 23 contracts worth $100 million to McKinsey since 2015. Three of those contracts were through a competitive process. The other 20 were single-sourced, meaning there was no competition. These contracts were spent on things like digital modernization and other large transformation initiatives. It's not clear what value taxpayers are getting. Um, you know, as with any consulting firm, they're going to pitch that their wares are better, unique, proprietary, and departments 
may well go for that. Call this meeting to order. A House of Commons committee is now looking into whether taxpayers got value for what they paid for and whether there should be an investigation. You know, we, we want to know exactly what the processes were for procurement. Was there preferential treatment? And if there was, it's going to open up certainly larger ethical questions. There are ethical questions about McKinsey. It's been involved in scandals in South Africa, China and the US, where the company agreed to pay $600 million for its role advising businesses on how to sell more opioids during the drug epidemic. The Liberals uh, have a challenge since they've been in power, the SNC-Lavalin affair, We Charity. So this sense of, yeah, being embedded with, uh, 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 you know, business uh, actors, so uh, private companies or wealthy people. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says he welcomes the committee's work and defended the use of consultants. I think people can understand that uh, professional public service needs to make sure that it's uh, doing uh, the things the best way to well serve Canadians and uh, regularly draws on outside expertise. The committee wants Dominic Barton to testify, Canada's former ambassador to China, chair of the government's 2016 Advisory Council on Economic Growth, and once the director of McKinsey. The chair thinks this points to a broader problem of the government's overspending on outside contracts. It's, it's ridiculous. It's not a good use of taxpayers' money for what little return we are getting. I could go to anyone in a grade one class and get the same answer. Trudeau's lackadaisical approach to procurement has bred a culture of waste and favoritism toward firms like McKinsey. Stronger sole source justification rules could help, but real change requires voting out the liberals and their habit of playing fast and loose with public funds. With the Trudeau government's cozy relationship with consultant firm McKinsey and Company, on January 11, 2023, Reports revealed $66 million in untendered contracts awarded to the firm under Trudeau's watch, and the Prime Minister has been forced to launch a review. But Trudeau's promise rings hollow given his government's track record of putting corporate cronies first. According to Trudeau, the contracts were supposedly to modernize and improve public service delivery. However, the massive 30-fold increase in deals awarded to McKinsey since Trudeau took power suggests otherwise. This looks more like backroom favoritism than efficient use of taxpayer dollars. Conservatives have long warned against such opaque sole sourcing. Trudeau also promised the typical routine follow-up. Canadians have heard this empty gesture before. After the We Charity and SNC-Lavalin scandals, Trudeau made similar claims only to be evasive and unaccountable once the headlines faded. His reassurances are not working anymore. And just when you think the Liberals couldn't get involved in any more scandals, the latest report from Canada's procurement watchdog paints a troubling picture of how the federal bureaucracy has bent over backwards to favor consulting firm McKinsey under the Liberal government. Time and again, standard procurement strategies were suspiciously altered to allow McKinsey to secure lucrative contracts worth millions. This reeks of backroom favoritism. As the report documents, normal competitive bidding processes were changed to accommodate McKinsey's eligibility. In other cases, McKinsey was made the sole compliant bidder after dubious re-evaluations disqualified competitors. The report rightly concludes these actions create a perception of bias toward McKinsey within procurement branches. There is no justification for why federal public servants could not perform the tasks that were instead outsourced to McKinsey. Yet Trudeau decided to favor his friends at McKinsey anyway. His cronyism is unsurprising given McKinsey's head Dominic Barton's close ties to Trudeau and Liberal caucus members. Barton served on the Liberals' Advisory Council on Economic Growth and Indo-Pacific Advisory Committee. Barton also introduced Trudeau when he spoke at the World Economic Forum. Furthermore, Barton conceived the failed and scandalous Canada Infrastructure Bank. McKinsey, under Barton's leadership, paid nearly $600 million over its role in fueling the opioid crisis. Despite this unethical track record, Trudeau granted McKinsey and Barton over $100 million in contracts. McKinsey's other transgressions include illegally boosting opioid sales and facing corruption probes in South Africa and France. McKinsey also held a retreat near Uyghur detention centers in China. Yet Trudeau rewarded his well-connected friend Barton anyway through preferential contracts. The liberals talk a big game about fairness, ethics, and transparency. But reports like this expose how their practices enable corporate backroom deals that shortchange taxpayers. Only conservatives can be trusted to ensure competitive fairness in government contracting. Canadians deserve to know contracts are awarded based on merit, not cozy connections. This report gives ample reason to believe the system is stacked to benefit liberal-friendly consultants like McKinsey at the expense of taxpayers.
While liberals line the pockets of insiders, conservatives would ensure an open, competitive bidding process that serves the public interest rather than political cronies. Real accountability and procurement is needed. The McKinsey case highlights systemic failures in federal procurement that let well-connected firms feed at the taxpayer trough. Conservatives will institute reforms to safeguard competitive, ethical contracting practices that respect the Canadian taxpayer. Going back in time to the Arrive can allegations of misconduct that began in November 2022, the unfolding Arrive can scandal provided a sobering case study in liberal mismanagement of taxpayer dollars. Despite repeated government assurances, investigations by the Auditor General, Procurement Watchdog, and now the CBSA itself revealed serious misconduct in how this unnecessary act was procured. Of course, the Prime Minister insists he has full confidence in the bureaucrats involved despite clear reasons for concern. His tired routine and refusing accountability has become signature Trudeau. He maintains the Arayakin fiasco is simply public servants not following rigorous liberal protocols. But the buck stops with the PM and cabinet for fostering a culture enabling mismanagement. The exaggerated need for Arrive can allow liberals to funnel tens of millions to consultants and irresponsibly outsource vital border security roles. Conservatives warned against this from the outset. Of course, average hardworking Canadians follow every reporting rule and regulation or face consequences. But liberal connected firms like GC Strategies face no repercussions for dubious deals handing them millions in Arrive can contracts. There is a clear double standard. The Arrive Commess joins a growing list of liberal misadventures with public funds. When will liberals be held accountable for repeatedly failing Canadians? Trudeau has been a prime minister for eight years, eight years full of hollow promises, empty pledges, and wasting Canadians' money. Canada is now ranked at number four among countries that have the highest debt at 102%. On Trudeau's watch, the average income needed to own a home has skyrocketed from 39% to 63.5%. Uncontrolled immigration and insufficient housing construction have left young Canadians struggling to enter the market. Yet liberals pretend helplessly shocked by a crisis of their own making. Trudeau once promised affordable housing in 2015. Eight budgets later, the dream of ownership is still receding for many Canadians. Rather than take responsibility, liberals offer more talks, slogans, and half-baked ideas. Canadians have seen this film before. Thank you very much, Mayor Olivia. And um, the last time Olivia and I were together was last Friday, um, the Good Friday procession um, through my riding, which the mayor lives in. And we had uh, done the announcement on Wednesday in Vancouver um, of support for renters. Um, and then we had done an announcement on the Thursday. Um, I was in Winnipeg of more support for childcare. And then I saw the mayor on Friday. We were walking in the procession and she said, I'm glad you guys are doing stuff on renters. I really hope there will be something more for affordable housing. And if there is, let's announce it together. So... Madam Mayor, here we are. Um, your wish uh, is my command. Uh, I am really, really glad to be back in Toronto after tra back home in Toronto after traveling around the country a bit. Um, this is my second Toronto housing announcement this week, which is great. Or my se sorry, the uh, my second Toronto announcement this week because we announced school food on the Monday. Um, and I'm really glad to have two of my Toronto caucus colleagues, uh, Rob and Julie, with me. Um, we've worked together for a long time, and housing is an issue both of them are so deeply committed to, and that really we have worked together as 416 Caucus on together with the city. Um, and it is really nice to have a city councillor, Chris, here with us too. Um, I also want to thank Ray Sullivan and the incredible people of St. Jude Community Homes. St. Jude runs a number of community housing sites in Toronto's downtown. Today, we are at one of the buildings they operate on Parliament Street, where there are 24 affordable rental homes for women, Indigenous residents, seniors, people with disabilities, and people experiencing or at risk of homelessness. There are built-in supports here and across all the sites that St. Jude operates. 
like meal programs and other services to help residents with their mental health and well-being. Um, I was really moved by our tour of this building earlier today. Uh, Annie Sequin, who works here, gave us the tour. And she was really speaking, um, I would say, with great empathy and compassion and respect about the people who live here. And she talked about how hard she and everyone who works here tries to ensure that everyone here has the support they need to feel good about themselves, to get back on their feet, and to build a good life. Um, she talked about things like being sure we, the mayor and I um, and the team were shown around an apartment that someone is moving into soon. She showed us the dishes that they've bought for the person to use. And then there wasn't a pillow or a comforter on the bed. Um, and I said, hey, Anise, like, aren't they going to need a pillow and a comforter? And she said, yeah, but we like the person to be able to choose so that they can choose what, their, what cover they have. Um, I think that's really important. And she said, you know, our job is to help everyone who lives here be their best self and live their best life. I think that's very powerful. I'm glad the federal government was able to support the creation of homes in this building with a 1.2 with 1.2 million dollars in capital funding through our rapid housing initiative in 2022. I am so grateful to everyone who works at St. Jude, who supports St. Jude. We have some board members here too for being such a strong resource for Toronto's most vulnerable residents. This is a wonderful example of the kind of community housing we need more of in Toronto and across Canada. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. Just as with out of control inflation, the liberal response to housing unaffordability has been lethargic at best. They ignored warning signs, choosing woke virtue signaling over responsible policy. Regular Canadians pay the price while liberals delay action. Liberals pledge access to the middle class as if this crisis emerged overnight, not on their watch. In reality, a generation has grown up knowing only skyrocketing costs and declining hope of home ownership under Trudeau's leadership. What Trudeau suggests he has suddenly discovered the gravity of this housing crisis, Canadians rightly scoff. It rings hollow after eight years of ignoring conservative calls for concrete measures to expand supply. Canadians deserve a government that respects taxpayers and stewards public dollars with accountability. But Trudeau and his cabinet of spendthrift corporatists have failed miserably on this front. Conservatives understand that fair competition, not backroom liberal connections, should drive government contracting. This report gives ample reason to believe the system is rigged under Trudeau's watch. Canadians deserve better. With a government full of corruption, favoritism, and spending taxpayers' money, liberal insiders become richer every day. Only conservatives will use every measure possible to bring home accountability for Canadians and cut corruption. Last Thursday, Larry Brock stated that the Prime Minister is not worth the cost of the corruption that Canadians are dealing with as he and his government has spent over $21 billion on outside consultants. Being a hypocrite is definitely Justin Trudeau's unique characteristic, spending billions in a span of two weeks since the beginning of April 2024 announcing new programs every day, pretending he cares about the Canadians and how this will be beneficial in the future. Instead of helping struggling Canadians with the unaffordable cost of living as a result of every and each decision Justin Trudeau has made over the past eight years, making the Liberals even richer with every step. As a continuous act of hypocrisy, Trudeau has claimed he is going to fight corruption in the upcoming budget, which will be discussed today. Mr. Speaker, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost or corruption. In the past year, this government spent over $21 billion on outside consultants. Rather than helping struggling Canadians, he's focused on making Liberal insiders richer. It's no shock that the Liberal favoured GC Strategies, who pocketed $20 million for doing nothing on the Rive scam, was founded the same year that he took office. Shame. Will this Prime Minister commit to cutting all waste and corruption in the upcoming budget, or will he continue to get more Liberal insiders rich? Here, here, here. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. 
Mr. Speaker, as my colleague knows, the Minister of Public Services and Procurement, the President of the Treasury Board, myself as Minister responsible for the Border Services Agency, have already taken steps to reduce reliance on outside consultants. Mr. Speaker, we've reviewed and changed the process for approving these kind of contracts. We'll continue to look at everything necessary to ensure that taxpayers' money is well spent. And those people that are responsible for these decisions know that they'll be held accountable in the case of misuse or abuse. The latest McKinsey contracting controversy is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to ethical lapses and mismanagement under Justin Trudeau's liberal government. Despite repeated scandals and reports confirming corruption, the prime minister continues governing as if his hands are clean. But Canadians see through the hypocrisy and we will never forget all of Trudeau's failures. We will always remember the corruption, the greed, the theft, and MP Larry Brock has proved resilient in staying on top of the Arrivekin scandal. He won't let Trudeau and his liberals get away with it, and neither will we. The Arrive scam merely scratches the surface of the rot in corruption in this NDP Liberal government. Their procurement system is seriously flawed and broken. For example, they paid KPMG, a consulting company, almost 700000 taxpayer dollars to learn how to cut back on consultants. Oh. You can't make up this lunacy. They've learned nothing. The question is simple. In the budget next week, will we see a cut to all the corruption? The Honourable Minister for Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As our colleague, the Minister of Public Safety, has said repeatedly, repeating falsehoods doesn't make those falsehoods true. What they should know, however, is that the Auditor General did table an important report just a few weeks ago, which found that rules were not followed by a few public servants. Fortunately, many of these rules have been updated mm -hmm. and regulations and expectations around the use of those rules have been clearly commi uh, communicated to all relevant public servants. A couple of weeks ago, mid-March, we heard from both uh, Darren Anthony and uh, Christian Firth, uh, the two principal owners of GC Strategies, also known as Government of Canada Strategies, who picked apart the findings in the Auditor General's report, specifically Mr. Firth um, said his reputation had been damaged by false information and in what he called an inaccurate report by the AG. He quoted, virtually everything reported about my company in the media and stated about me and my company has been false. He said his company was paid $11 million for the Arrive Cam disputing the Auditor General's findings that GC Strategies received almost double that, $19 million. He blamed the discrepancy on flaws in the government's financial systems. We then heard from his partner, Darren Anthony, and surprisingly, simply parroted everything that his partner had said, didn't even take the time to actually read your report, didn't take the time to read the report of the procurement ombudsman, but had no problem stating that everything was categorically false. Specifically, he said, the Auditor General's findings were inaccurate. He says that the report from both AG and procurement ombudsman um, which found both serious problems with the RiveCan contracts were wrong and admitted again that he had not read the report. So I'm sure this is not the first time the AG team has learned about these particular statements. I'd like an opportunity for you to respond on how you feel about these particular statements. Thank you for the question. Um, I'll start with the findings. We're confident with the findings that we, we provided to Parliament in our reports. We have a rigorous audit process to make sure that the facts and information that we provide is accurate. With respect to the estimates, uh, we did provide an estimate in the report uh, around the overall cost, and we, uh, we identified an amount per contractor. There are some facts that absolutely cannot be disputed. In particular, it is a fact that the contractors were paid the amounts that we listed in our report. I should say that they received at least those amounts. Some contractors received more. What is really at issue is whether or not those amounts should be attributed to the ArriveCan app versus work on another IT project. And this is where the poor record keeping 
uh, problems by CB CBSA, raise this confusion, and uh, leave these open questions. Ultimately, in our report, we, uh, we mentioned that the poor record keeping led us to have to build up an estimate. We used the CBSA's financial systems, the contracting documents, and other evidence to build up this, ep this estimate. It is important to remember that our estimate includes more than what was spent on building the app. It also includes amounts for the implementation, maintenance, and other associated costs. And this is because Parliament asked us to look at all aspects of the Arrive Can app. The shortcomings in the documentation and the weak controls made it very difficult to precisely attribute costs amongst these elements of ArriveCan. But ultimately, any, uh, any number that is provided, whether it's CBSA's or ours, is an estimate because of the poor record keeping. I'll stop. After nearly a decade of liberal rule, the examples of cronism and misspent tax dollars continue piling up at an alarming rate. The McKinsey affair, like the WE charity and SNC Lavalin scandals before it, reveals a government that talks about lofty values while enabling unethical backroom deals. The Iraq and Boondoggle showcases stunning incompetence regarding basic contracting practices. And let's not forget, this entire legacy of waste has left Canadians struggling with a skyrocketing cost of living and fading dreams of home ownership. Unaffordable housing and inflation are the direct result of years of misguided liberal policies, not some newfound crisis. At every turn, Trudeau tries to dodge accountability by claiming he's unaware of problems or just learn of some scandal through media reports. But the buck stops with the Prime Minister and his cabinet. It is their culture of arrogance, secrecy, and reckless spending that enabled corruption to take root. After eight years of ethical breaches and billion-dollar blunders, how can Canadians possibly trust Liberals to get spending under control? The evidence shows Conservatives remain the only party willing to safeguard taxpayer dollars and ensure a fair, competitive procurement process. Enough is enough. The time has come to clean house in Ottawa and elect a government that takes integrity and transparency seriously. One that will drain the swamp of liberal waste rather than funneling ever more public funds to connected insiders. Only the Conservatives have shown they will enact the real reforms Canadians deserve. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Trudeau's government will ever play it fair and actually think about the Canadians once? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.